Hello everyone, welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. We will continue on the topic of uh, quantitative structure activity relation that is uh, QSAR. So if you look at the physical chemical properties, there are four aspects that needs to be looked at and that's what we were looking at yesterday also. But the hydrophobicity of the molecule and then you have different substituents, right? So the hydrophobicity of the substituent that is going to change electronic properties of the substituents, steric properties of the substituents. So all these play a very important role um, in the physical chemical properties of uh, the molecule. Okay, so um, we need to understand these effect of these uh, which in turn will affect um, the activity so that we can uh, develop a uh, good uh, quantitative structure activity relation that's the regression. So the substituent can change the hydrophobic uh, hydrophilic balance the substituent can change the electronic properties okay the substituent can change the steric properties um, of the parent molecule uh, we looked at hans equation okay this is a equation uh, relating various physical chemical properties to the biological activity okay so we have log p we have the electronic steric factor so you may start with a simple relationship um, like activity on the left hand side and on the right hand side uh, log p we have a parabolic type of relation it need not be all the time parabolic but um, it can be linear also then we have the electronic okay then we have the steric effect and this is a constant okay that's uh, the Hansch equation generally um, they suggest Hansch suggests this um, so substituents must be chosen to satisfy certain criteria a range of values um, for the physical chemical property so I need to have which substituent to put into the parent molecule to achieve this range of changes uh, the value should not be correlated that's very very important okay that's also important and then uh, of course a rule of thumb at least five structures for each parameter which we are studying so for example if you look at uh, the uh, five okay this is this is related to the uh, okay substitution this is a molar refractivity okay molar refractivity is related to like uh, I mentioned in the previous class the density the molecular weight and so on um, so look at this as uh, pi increases molar refractivity also increases so obviously they are uh, correlated with each other they are correlated as uh, pi increases molar re refractivity also increases okay uh, what is this uh, pi pi is uh, related to the hydrophobicity okay so as the hydrophobicity increases mr also that means volume and density also so they are correlated now look at this set of uh, um, substituents so as uh, pi increases mr doesn't increase so you can see this unlike this okay so i need to consider using this type of uh, substitutions in my parent molecule rather than going this way that's what uh, uh, the conclusion is okay so look at this there is no correlation between uh, pi which is related to the hydrophobicity vis-a-vis -vis the MR the molecular refractivity okay so negative uh, pi means they contribute more towards lipophilicity positive means they contribute towards the hydrophobicity of this okay so um, there is something called a Craig plot which I showed you in the previous class this is taken from uh, this particular uh, reference so um, you have the electron withdrawing here uh, electron donating here we have hydrophobic here then we have the hydrophilic so various substituents like um, chloro bromo or NO2 okay they all lead to increase in electron withdrawing and increase in hydrophobicity whereas if you look in this quadrant we have uh, electron donating and hydrophobicity these type of uh, substitutions if you look at uh, this quadrant uh, we have uh, hydrophilicity as well as electron donating OH type of substitute NH2 OH so if you have they are more hydrophilic as well as they donate the electrons if you look in this quadrant um, we have CO NH2 CN COOH and so on so they are electron drawing as well as hydrophilic so um, this is a very interesting plot so we can uh, modify our parent compound uh, by having substituents 
so that it covers all these four quadrants as well as it covers a range of uh, electron withdrawing, electron donating, hydrophobic, hydrophilic. That's what uh, this plot is all about. Okay, as I said, this is taken from this particular reference. Um, so, it allows an easy identification of suitable substituents for AQSIR, which includes both relevant properties. A substituent from each of the quadrant to ensure orthogonality and a range of values. So, we can select lower and higher so that we can cover a big range of values. Okay. Okay, there is another approach that's called the Topolis scheme. Okay, so we imagine we have a, a, a parent compound. We replace the H with the say 4-chloro. Uh, so the activity may be increasing, activity may be decreasing, or the activity may be same. Okay, so if it is more, then of course you know that uh, chloro in the fourth position has an effect. So we can have a 2-chloro substitution at the third and the fourth. Again, we can have activity increasing, activity being equal, and activity can even go down. Okay, so if it is increasing, then uh, you can think about having a um, fluoro, okay, and then we can even think of uh, replacing with a nitro, like that, you know. If it is less or equal, we may think of uh, replacing uh, uh, the chloro with the fluoro. Now, if you go here, so by putting chloro, it's become less, so you can think about um, having a CH2, CH3, SO2, like if it's equal then uh, we can think about uh, other substitutions so this is a very interesting um, a tree like uh, conclusion we can arrive at so at each of the substitution substitution we can find out whether it is uh, increasing the activity uh, or no change in the activity or less so that way by using uh, this tree we can slowly make changes to the parent molecule and achieve a highly active compound okay so if uh, you know that you um, you are ending up like this um, then you how to change it to this and so on actually so that's called a topless scheme um, so you used to decide which substituents to use if optimizing compounds so we can do one by one synthesis okay so if the synthesis is very complex and slow this is a very good approach if the synthesis is very simple you may just uh, blindly um, substitute uh, different functional groups you can use that Craig plot which I showed you before okay and then uh, synthesize a large number of compounds with various electron donating withdrawing hydrophilic lipophilic whereas if it's a very long slow complex synthesis we can uh, use this type of uh, topless scheme and um, so at after each uh, new molecule synthesis we can go into the branch of the tree depending upon if the activity is more or less or equal. Uh, so this is uh, very useful for aromatic type of substitutions. Uh, for an aliphatic also we can uh, look at, we'll look at that la later. Uh, so, so what's the rationale here? So we are changing phi plus phi and or plus sigma okay this is related to hydrophobicity this is to electronic so activity increases um, so no change little change okay plus phi and or plus disadvantages okay uh, so we are adding second chlorine to increase phi and sigma further um, replace with the methyl okay so methyl when we do we get a minus sigma but we maintain the plus phi um, replace with O methyl we are getting both the minus of um, pi and minus of sigma okay so uh, this is the logic by which it goes actually okay so s further changes suggested based on the arguments of pi and sigma and steric factor okay so this is the logic by which uh, or the rational by which uh, changes are made once you start with the para chloro and see what is happening uh, similar you can do for aliphatic substitutions also so what you do is imagine you have a CH3 you replace the CH3 with the isopropyl so activity can increase activity can be equal or activity can be less so depending upon the situation if it's more so what do you do instead of isopropyl you may replace with cyclopentyl so if the activity increases you go to cyclohexyl then you put in CH2 phenyl okay then CH2, CH2 phenyl like that, you end up with a very highly active compound. 
but if the activity doesn't change after cyclopentyl you may go to cyclopropyl if the activity decreases so you reduce from pentyl to butyl cyclobutyl okay this is the logic here now um, when you put isopropyl there no change in the activity okay that's equal so what do we do um, we put in CS, Cl2 CF3 uh, CH2 CF, CF2 and so on activity may go down or activity may be equal so you plan accordingly uh, if the activity is less by putting isopropyl then what do you do you put H because obviously uh, when you make it more hydrophobic it's not working so you go to H that is remove this or you make it a CH2 or CH3 try to make it a little bit hydrophilic as you can see in this and hopefully you may get a more active compound than the original parent compound Okay. So the, this is how top list scheme works actually. Uh, this is ideal if you have um, um, very complex synthesis and slow uh, and very time consuming synthetic uh, uh, protocol. Whereas uh, if uh, the synthesis is very fast, uh, I would go f uh, and look at the Craig approach and uh, synthesize large number of molecules, substituent molecules and then test their activity. Okay, so um, the logic as I said, um, if you look here, you put R as H, uh, the activity that is your starting, then you put 4, four chloro, uh, activity increases, then you put 3, 4 chloro, okay, 3 and 4 chloro, uh, then activity decreases, then you try 4 bromo, activity is same, put 4 nitro, biological activity, it's very good, so you would have achieved a, uh, a molecule, um, by following this particular logic okay uh, again look at this we have uh, a R here imagine this is your molecule R starting with H then you put 4 chloro activity is less so what do you do you try 4 methoxy again activity is less okay you have tried uh, um, more hydrophilic by putting oxygen but it doesn't so you try 3 chloro here activity has increased so high potency so okay so this position is better than this position so here you do 3 CF3 activity is going down so maybe instead of chloro you put bromo again activity is high 3 iodo activity is less so uh, chloro is okay bromo is okay so what do you do 3 5 chloro activity is good so you found some active compounds okay by following this type of uh, logic here uh, you can also replace with bioisosters. Okay, uh, we talked about bioisosters long time back. Um, so, look at these groups of molecules. Uh, it's got a um, pi that is uh, related to hydrophobic, hydrophilic uh, balance. So it's negative here because we have uh, O here. That's why uh, we have a lot of carbons. That's why it's positive. This is becoming more negative. Okay, so sigma for this. Uh, look at this sigma is like this uh, MR for this molecule molecular refractivity is like this uh, sigma for para sigma for uh, me, um, methyl me, meta substitution sorry not methyl meta substitutions okay so um, I can so you can check it out whether there is any correlation cross correlation between and then we can uh, make the substitution substitutions accordingly okay we can select either uh, I want to have a hydrophobic system or a hydrophilic system you get quite hydrophilic here um, so bioisosters understanding the bioisosterism is very very important if you want to substitute uh, uh, new functional groups okay to improve the activity choose substituents with similar physicochemical properties okay look at um, CN, NO2 and CO methyl they could be bioesters choose bioesters based on most important physical chemical property okay what is very very important is the electronic feature very important or the hydrophobicity important or molecular refractivity molecular refractivity as I said is volume uh, and density that means uh, the sizes so depending upon which you realize is important you can choose bioesters based on most important physical chemical for example, COME, SOME, okay, COME, uh, SOME uh, are similar. Look at this, sigma P, 
that is when it is substituted in the para position uh, so me and so to me are similar uh, phi's you can see here uh, hydrophobicity not electronic this is electronic this is hydrophobicity okay so uh, depending upon which uh, physical chemical property you think is important we can select so uh, bioisosters can be very very useful when you are synthesizing new molecules with different substitutions okay then there is uh, something called a free wilson approach okay free wilson approach the biological activity of the parent structure is measured and compared with the activity of analogs bearing different substitution okay that's free wilson so the equation is derived relating biological activity the presence or absence of particular substitute so activity is equal to k1 x1 uh, plus k2 x2 plus k and so on k n x n plus z okay c is the parent molecule and then uh, when i put different substituents how the activity changes xn is an indicator which is given value 0 or 1 depending on whether the substituent is present or not so if it is not present we will make k1 0 otherwise if it's present k1 will be 1 the contribution of each substituent n to activity is determined in the value of kn okay so this uh, kn tells you whether uh, its contribution is it is a constant representing the overall activity of the structures study okay this is called a free wilson approach okay um, so what we do we have uh, say different uh, substituents coming into the picture so if it's present uh, k1 or k2 can have a value otherwise it will become zero the contribution of each substituent n to activity is determined in the value of k kn that contribution is it is a constant representing the overall activity of the structure study so what are the advantages no need for physico chemical constants or tables uh, useful for structures with unusual substituents sort of quantifying the biological effect of molecular features that cannot be quantified or tabulated by hand method so for each of these uh, uh, complicated substituents we can find out what it is contributions okay so here we need to have a large number of analogs to be synthesized to represent each different substituent and each different position of a substituent that's also important okay that's a big problem it is difficult to rationalize why specific substituents are good or bad for activity because uh, uh, if you look at the other approaches the hange um, approach uh, we know sigma the electronic factor okay electron donating or withdrawing effect hydrophilic or hydrophobic effect so we can have some rational or mr um, positive or low and so on so we can have different uh, logic for why a particular substituent is giving certain activity and also the effects of different substitutions may not be additive that's very very important i put in say for example uh, four chloro then i put in three four uh, dichloro the effects may be very different so it will not be an additive effect so intramolecular interactions are always possible so these are the disadvantages of this uh, uh, approach um qsar and log p log p is a very important uh, i so arcotic activity of esters alcohols ketones and ethers against stat poles okay this is taken from this reference so as you can see as the log p um, keeps changing the activity also keeps changing and these are the various substituent groups actually that comes into the picture this is the OH starting from that and so we keep on adding CS3 so it's becoming more uh, hydrophobic okay activity also has become 1.05 so log P plays a very important role so we can plot same reference we can plot a log P versus uh, activity so as the as it becomes more hydrophobic uh, the activity also increases the r square which is a measure of the fit of the data um, so this is the qsir equation straight line equation x is the log p here uh, y is your activity here so the regression coefficient is 0.88 and r square which is a measure of the fit is 0.77 which indicates a good fit okay so uh, yeah uh, this is for ketones so for a subset only alcohols so if you take only alcohols you may have a uh, second order 
or a quadratic relation so you can see r going up much further okay so as i mentioned long time back qsr is very good if you have a set of uh, molecules um, when you extend it to other molecules sometimes it might not work actually so alcohols alone you can see a very good relationship okay of course um, this is also reasonably good we have taken ketone, ether, statpole, alcohol, esters also. But uh, if you take in more uh, hydrophobic substance, then uh, the um, regression relation could be very poor. Uh, so, yeah, look at this uh, log P, hydrophobic. This is very hydrophilic. Uh, methanol, um, so log, propanol, isopropanol, ethanol. Uh, okay. Phenyl and imidazole, thiethylamine. Now this is becoming more uh, hydrophobic, so it's more positive. Benzene quite high, pentanol quite high. Okay, uh, log P is a very important thing because log P, as we have been talked talked long time back, it tells you the solubility, it tells you the GIA absorption, it tells you the HERJ, HRG, it tells you the plasma binding. Uh, it tells you the membrane penetration so log p is dependent on so many uh, log p affects so many different parameters polarizability is called atomic polarizability ease of distortion of electron clouds okay uh, some of van der waals equation like okay, so if you remember van der waal equation a by r raised to the power 6 b r raised to the power 12 okay i hope you remember that uh, molecular refractivity of course i'm um, defined before also molecular refractivity talks about the size and also the polarizability uh, so molecular weight uh, divided by the density okay that's called the molecular refractivity this is another important descriptor this is another important descriptor this is another important descriptors they will come quite a lot um, in many of your qsar equations as you go along in your, in your uh, activity so it's different substituents okay volume molecular refractivity okay uh, ele electronic feature uh, okay sorry this is not electronic feature five represents the hydro uh, phobicity okay and then this is the number of rotatable bonds so all these can have uh, effect on your uh, qsar relationship okay uh, let's uh, look at uh, some simple systems also okay now if you uh, if you know this is uh, called a nalidisic acid okay this is a commercial uh, antibiotic um, this uh, was uh, discovered a uh, few decades back. This uh, is given for gram negative bacteria, uh, mainly for urinary tract infection, which has good, very reasonably weak, good activity. Um, the structure activity studies have shown that the pyridone ring A, this is the pyridone ring A, is essential for activity, and uh, this ring can be changed. So we can have this kept constant and we can have uh, um, these things changed quite a lot okay so we can have a large number of uh, compounds synthesized um, following this uh, approach okay so uh, many compounds were synthesized uh, by uh, modifying the ring B okay they were found to be almost 500 times more active than the original nalidisic acid which was uh, originally discovered maybe about 15-20 years back okay um, and, and the novel compounds have much broader antibacterial activity than the original okay so 1983 nor flux nor flux you can see this uh, the ring A is kept constant it's change on this of flux ciproflux, tozoflux, uh, inoxygen. So all these are new molecules um, that were synthesized starting from uh, the original analgesic acid okay, as you can see here and you can see that uh, this portion is kept constant and you make a lot of changes on the other B ring and you end up with very highly active molecules okay, uh, and uh, more potent and more wider 
range of activity okay that is uh, the beauty of understanding the structure activity uh, relationship okay that's very very important actually and so this is uh, taken uh, from uh, this particular reference this is a very interesting uh, uh, picture okay taxol okay or paclitaxol this is an anti cancer drug originally it was found from uh, uh, a natural product it's called yew trees it's found in some european and also uh, in uh, himalayan region this tree is found the original molecule the anti cancer property uh, molecule had poor bioavailability bio um, it had very poor uh, water solubility so the second generation a um, lot of changes were done uh, to the parent molecule uh, to improve the water solubility and then then uh, later on uh, salts of uh, this was also made uh, to improve uh, its water solubility so the current uh, taxol has uh, better bioavailability and water solubility unlike the original um, so how this was performed because of the understanding and the importance of uh, each uh, one of the functional groups and the positions so uh, look at this uh, removal of or modification of a OH group uh, reduces activity okay hydrophobic uh, interactions between these group may correlate with the activity that means you can have see two benzene rings so there could be a benzene benzene stacking mm -hmm. a, a ring contraction gives uh, products with reduced cytotoxicity but similar tubulin polymerization activity to factory taxol uh, opening of this uh, ring gives inactive product contraction of the c ring to a five membered ring reduces activity uh, deacetylization that means remove acetylization uh, gives less active product so by knowing uh, what are the important groups that are necessary for activity what are the groups that might not really have a play in the activity um, we can develop new structures um, by modifying those places reduction of the c9 carboxyl group increases to an okay alpha OH group increases activity slightly the removal of the 10 state or deacetylization to form 10 okay d as toxic derivative do not make major change in activity okay so these positions do not have much effect uh, acylation reduces activity slightly or significantly depend on depending on the acyl group so you see some locations have a major impact on activity some locations have minor impact on activity so one uh, with the medicinal chemistry synthetic chemistry knowledge can come up with large number of uh, new derivatives and check out their activity uh, because as I said the original uh, paclitaxol has poor bioavailability and um, poor water solubility and although changes have been made to come up with new generations of paclitaxol still there is a lot of research that could be done in coming up with new structures so this uh, slide was taken from uh, this uh, particular reference okay so uh, we will continue further on this topic of uh, qsr in the next class as well thank you very much for your time